So in this first part of 2.2, we're going to talk about linear relations and functions and what makes something linear versus any other type of function. So let me just jot something down for you really quickly. So in the category of linear relations and functions, here are the only things that are allowed. You can have addition. You can have subtraction. And you can have multiplication by a constant. constant meaning a number, like three or something like that. So those three things are allowed. You can add terms together. You can subtract terms from each other. You can multiply a variable by a constant, but there are many things that are not allowed. Like you're not allowed to multiply two variables together. A variable cannot appear in the denominator. You can't have exponents other than one. So you can't have like a squared power or a square root or anything like that. So you'll have examples in your homework where you'll have to answer this question. State whether the function is linear or not. So here, here's what we've got. This is x is being multiplied by a constant. That's fine. Then you subtract 5. That's fine. So this is linear. It doesn't break any of the rules, so it's totally fine. It can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. You remember that? Um, so it's of the form y equals mx plus b. So another rule of thumb that you could stick with is if you can't write it in this form, it's probably not linear. All right, so next one. x to the third power. That's like x times x times x. That's multiplication that's not allowed. It's multiplication by a variable instead of by a constant. So no, this is not linear. And the reason is because there is an exponent that is not equal to 1. Like this x technically has an exponent of 1. That's fine. You can't have an exponent of 3 or 2, can't have a square root, can't have variables multiplied by each other. So this one is not okay. So there's kind of this list of rules that you need to have in your back of your mind which tell you when it is or is not linear. Okay, next we've got this linear function, f of c. Remember this function notation from the last notes. So a function of degrees Celsius. That's what that capital C means. And it's 1.8 C plus 32. You can use it to find the Celsius or the Fahrenheit degrees if you're given Celsius. So this is on the Celsius scale, normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So this is a value of C. We're trying to figure out what the Fahrenheit equivalent would be. So instead of writing this, remember your function notation, you can write F and then in the parentheses, write what you want to plug in for C. And we want to plug in 37 for C. Okay, so then we just go into this function, we plug it in. So we have 1.8 times 37 and then plus 32. All right, so this, we could probably just plug that into your calculator. Make sure that you're writing this down so that you're showing the work first. So you could write 1.8 times 37 and then plus 32. Okay, so that would be 98.6, which I'm sure you guys probably recognize that because you probably know what the normal body temperature is in Fahrenheit. So 98.6, and you can see that's kind of cool. 37 is apparently what it is in Celsius. Okay, next. There are 100 Celsius degrees between freezing and boiling points and 180 Fahrenheit degrees between those two points. How many Fahrenheit degrees equals one Celsius degree? So basically what we're going to do with this, you're going to set up kind of a proportion, I suppose. All right, so if you know that this is true, you can say something like, you know, 100 Celsius degrees is equivalent to 180 Fahrenheit degrees, okay? And so what you want to do is you can divide okay, and then these would cancel. So you could say that 1 degrees Celsius is the same as, then when you reduce this down, remember dividing by 100, you have that little trick where you move the decimals over. So you'd say 1.8 degree Fahrenheit. So that's why when you get into like, you know, somewhere in the 20s in Celsius is the same as somewhere in the 70s for Fahrenheit. So you get to the point where this range is obviously quite a bit different. So every degree Celsius is the same as 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, that's it for that first set.